Okay, hello and welcome everyone. So I'm going to continue to walk through the problems from the practice review exercises. These are going over the moral hazard incentive contract type, type questions. So suppose you run a shop producing gizmos. Suppose the worker has a cost of effort. It's gonna be given by one half effort squared minus four effort plus 12. We have a worker's utility, which is just the wage minus their psychic effort cost. Worker has an alternative employment option worth $24. Total gizmo production is just gonna be effort directly into output. You can sell each gizmo for 16. Suppose you only pay a fixed hourly wage, what level level of effort will the worker set? How much must you pay so that they agree to work for you? What's your profits? The full incentive contract is of the form fixed plus variable, find A and B. Does either the firm or the worker have a preference between the two contracts? Explain. Well, you should be able to answer this immediately, right? We're gonna set up the workers' compensation so that they are ex exactly indifferent. They're gonna get $24 whether they work for us other, under either contract or whether they do their outside option. All right, so the first part. Worker will choose their, their effort to maximize their utility. So here's the costly effort function. That's just from this right here. Utility is gonna be wage minus effort. Take DU, DE, and then solve. We find an effort level of four. Given the effort level of four and given our profit function, we know that we're getting $16 per gizmo per unit of effort. Costs are just our labor cost. So the revenue component is just gonna be 64. Now, what are gonna be our costs? Well, the labor costs, we have an outside option worth $24 for our worker. Their psychic effort cost is minus eight, right? So this is gonna be four, it's gonna be eight. So the wage has to be 32 to keep them indifferent. Profits are then 32, that's from this. Utility is gonna be wage minus psychic effort cost. 24 is their outside option. Wage minus their psychic effort cost is gonna be, well, 32 is gonna be their wage. So we have to pay them 32. They're gonna incur this cost of, this should be eight, right? They're gonna incur a cost of eight. And then overall, they're gonna walk away with $24, which is just as good as their outside option. All right, so now instead of the fixed contract, we have a variable contract. Note the number of gizmos produced Q equals E, so we can write this as wage is equal to A plus B times effort. First, we want to know what's going to be the full in, what, what it's going to be the full return to the worker's effort. That's going to be D pi D E. So how does profits change with effort, units of effort? Well, it increases by 16 for each unit of effort. D pi D E is 16, so we'll set B, the variable component of the worker's contract, equal to 16. To solve for the worker's effort level, we read out their utility. So utility is going to be the wage, that's fixed plus variable component of the wage, minus their psychic effort cost. So we'll take D U D E, right? 16 minus E plus 4, or 20 is equal to E. Our profits are then going to be 16 times 20 minus the wage, which is now the fixed and variable component of the wage. So profits are going to be 16 times 20, 16 times E minus fixed portion of the wage times the variable portion of the wage is equal to minus A. So to find what A is gonna be, we want to set the worker's utility equal to 24, their outside option, and then find what is going to be that level of whatever is the fixed portion of the contract. So this is just plugging in the effort of 20 throughout. So it's gonna be A plus 16 times 20 minus one half 20 squared plus four times 20 minus 16. I've just written this out right here. And so we find the effort, the fixed component has to be 160. So this is the this is the situation where the worker is gonna essentially give us 160K worth of effort or worth of value by virtue of them working for us. So part E, the second scheme is more profitable, definitely because our profits are gonna be 16, uh, 160K versus the, or the, whatever the profits were up here, profits were 32. But the worker, has a stronger incentive in that case because there's no moral hazard because they've got the full returns of their effort. So that's good for the firm. That's why our profits are 160 here. However, by construction, the worker gets the $24 whether they work under either contract. And so the worker is indifferent. All right, and then let's think about, I, I think I hit it here. The question was, yeah, I think I did. Yeah, part F was suppose there's some fee. So the question is usually, what's this doing here? So there is a transfer of 160 from the worker to the firm. And my question then is like, how large can that transfer be in order to keep, in order to keep both 
the worker and the firm interested in that particular arrangement. So in order for the worker to agree, the fee can't be any larger than 160, otherwise they'd get less than their outside option, right? We set, a, the worker gives, the worker pays the employer, as it pays, right, in quotes, the employer 160, and if they were to pay 161, then their overall utility is gonna be 23, so they wouldn't do that. Think about where that was coming from. Uh, in order to make the contract a good idea for the firm, the amount paid to them must be at least 32, which is their profit under the fixed wage contract. So the fee, the transfer from the worker to the firm, has to be somewhere greater than or equal to 32 and less than or equal to 160 to keep both interested in that contract. All right, All right so suppose you produce thingies. Here's the effort cost. Here's the outside option. Here is the product market costs or price. Suppose you only pay a fixed hourly wage, what effort level? How much will they, how much do you pay the worker to make them agree? So what is that fixed hourly wage? What are your profits? Here's the full incentive profit maximizing contract, find A and B. Does either the firm or the worker have a preference? Well, the, the firm is gonna prefer the full incentive contract. The worker is gonna be indifferent. We know that already. And then suppose you found the contract, think of A as a fee that the worker's paying for the opportunity to be employed. For what size fee will both parties accept the contract? Yeah, that's what the question from above was supposed to be. All right, so the worker will choose effort E to maximize the utility. So we can write out the utility, wage minus the psychic effort cost. DUDE is gonna be minus two E plus two, or effort level of one. So given an effort level of one, profits are gonna be, what, $22 per thingy. We're gonna get one thingy. And so costs are just labor cost, W. So the revenue component, just 22. Worker has an outside option of $40. The psychic effort cost was seven. That was from this right here. Evaluate this at one. This gives us effort cost as seven. And so the worker's utility is gonna be their wage minus seven. So their wage must be 47 to keep them indifferent, right? Pay them 47. They lose, they put in one unit of effort, they, which costs them seven in terms of psychological utility, which leaves them with 40 units of overall utility, which matches their outside option. Our profits are then minus 25 because it's gonna be 22 minus the 47. Okay, good. So now think about the full incentive contract. First, observe how profits change with effort. So d pi de, each additional unit of effort generates one more unit of output, which we sell for $22. And so d pi de is 22, so we'll set b equal to 22. To solve for the worker's optimal effort, we write out their utility function. Then differentiating, this is gonna be, uh, so du de is gonna be 22 minus two e plus two, or 24 minus two e, or effort is 12. Then for profits, it's gonna be 22 times 12 minus w. Uh, subbing in for w, we find the wage is gonna be the fixed component plus the variable component. Effort level of 12 gives us the following expression for profits. There again, this is the full incentive contract one. The firm's profits are just gonna be whatever is the, the A component that the worker is giving to the firm. Here solving, we find that that's gotta be negative uh, 96, meaning we are paying the worker, right? A is negative 96, we're paying the worker negative 96, they're paying the firm 96. Okay, so the second scheme is more profitable than the first. We get, we get 96, the, the firm actually gets 96 versus minus 25 previously. That's this right here. The worker gets $40 either way. We got the worker indifferent. What's, what size fee has to keep them both interested in this contract? Well, the, the firm has to get something positive. So I said like minus 25. Technically, really, the firm would just have to get some positive fee to make them prefer this to their uh, to the fixed, the full incentive contract, like, or the, sorry, the fixed contract. Presumably, this firm's not going to do the fixed wave contract, right? Wage contract because their profits are minus 25. Like the firm's going to shut down. They're not going to operate and produce at minus 25. So any fee that's positive is actually, I sh I, this should actually be at least, yeah, the, it should be at least zero, right? It's positive. Uh, and then what happens if it's not, what happens if it's negative? Then they just shut down. So the lower bound actually here should be zero. That's how I scored this one on the exam. Um, and then the fee goes up to 96. So they, um, beyond 96, the, the worker's utility is gonna be smaller than 40. So if the fee was 97, the worker's utility would be 39 and they would rather just take their outside option, which would give them 40. Okay, suppose you produce thingies in this other shop. Good. So here's our effort cost. Here is our utility level, 15. Here is our 
uh, price of thingies in the output in the product market. Suppose you pay the fixed wage, what effort level will the worker set? How much do you pay your workers? Do they agree? What are your profits? Then find the full incentive contract. Then does anyone have a preference between the two contracts? Explain. And suppose continue with the contract you found. Think of A as the fee. For what size fee would both sides accept the contract? Okay, so the first part, we are going to find the utility maximizing level of effort when effort when compensation doesn't depend on effort at all. So when we have the fixed contract. So it's going to be wage minus the effort cost. Solving again, optimal level of effort is just one. So the worker is going to set a level of one. Profits are going to be 20, right? Or revenues are going to be 20, 20 times the one unit that was produced. So the worker has outside of option of $15. Psychic effort cost here is going to be one squared minus two minus eight. Now the effort cost is minus nine. So this is telling us something like maybe the worker actually enjoys what they're doing at this level. And so we actually can deduct from them. So this would be like, um, so in terms of economics, think about what's happening here. If they find the work enjoyable, right? If they find the work enjoyable, then there's actually a like a penalty. This is the compensating differential, right? So there's a compensating differential it means if the work is undesirable, you get a wage premium. If the work, so like throwing trash, if you work as a trash collector, uh, this is like uh, some of my friends did that as their summer job. I worked at an amusement park, and so I got a they got a wage premium. They got twelve to sixteen dollars an hour, and I got five to nine dollars an hour. So I got a wage penalty because I was working outside at a beach. So anyway, uh, right. So we the wage must be six to keep them indifferent. So this is saying my outside option is fifteen. My wage minus minus nine. Is wage plus nine or a wage of 16. So six minus minus nine is 15. All right. Now let's see what happens if we use the full incentive contract. So we want to give the worker the full returns of their efforts. So how does profit change with effort? Well, d pi de is 20, so b is going to be 20. So we write out our profit, we write out the utility function, find the optimal level of effort, turns out to be 11. So for profits, it's going to be 20 times 11. Remember the profit function is going to be 20 times 11, which is going to be the revenue, number of thingies times what price of thingies times the number of thingies produced, minus the wage, comes out to be well with a full incentive contract. The firm's profits are just what the worker is transferring to them. So we're going to set 15 equal to this expression, or 15 is equal to this stuff here, and we find the worker will pay the firm, pay, pay the firm 114. To be able to agree to the contract. So who prefers which contract or the other? The second scheme is more profitable relative to the first because the second doesn't have moral hazard. The worker has a stronger incentive to put forth a higher effort in that one. So the firm gets $14 in the first case, $114 in the second case, and by construction the worker is going to get $15 either way. $15 level of utility either way. We cut the worker indifferent. In order to agree, the fee can be no larger than 114 because if the worker transferred 115, their utility level would be $14, which is worse than their outside option. The firm has to receive at least $14 from this fee. Otherwise, they would rather just offer the fixed contract. Okay, that brings us to the end. Hope you enjoyed. Like or whatever. I'll see you later.